good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining me. Uh, this is uh, uh, the result of uh, some studies that we did almost a year ago in the context of the organic monitor, and I hope that uh, you're going to be interested uh, in uh, listening to this. I'm not going to introduce myself. Beatrice did uh, the best that I could have ever had, so let's just go forward. And I want to start with something that is maybe a bit old and not many people know or remember, which is the, uh, pardon my German pronunciation, Naturgemälde from Alexander von Humboldt, who was the first person that actually uh, invented the concept of uh, biogeography. So the first person to realize how the distribution of the species uh, around the world is actually constrained by uh, the different climatic envelopes. So basically the different intersection between elevation temperature and precipitation regulates where the species can be found, at least the vegetation uh, can be found in space and time. So following that, uh, there's something that we should be all concerned about that we all know, which is climate change. And according to the IPCC, uh, so we have different climatological models that show how temperature and precipitation based on uh, different scenarios could change in the next 30, 40, 50, or even 100 years in different ways based on our actions. And uh, of course you can see that there are different types of scenarios, so from worst case to let's say more uh, hopefully, uh, more, more hopeful type of uh, scenarios that we could reach in, uh, uh, in the next years. And this, of course, these uh, small changes as we have seen also from the presentation yesterday from the director of Yasad, this could, uh, even just a small change could mean a catastrophic uh, outcome for us due to the tipping points of, of some of the most, uh, of, of the biggest and most important uh, ecosystems in, uh, on the earth. So due to that, um, we know that two things are happening. One is that the, uh, there is an increase in intensity and frequency of these extreme climatic events. You could see it uh, in Europe due to the floods and the droughts or storms, things that have basically uh, just destroyed most of the uh, forest around Europe. At least there have been catastrophic events almost everywhere. And uh, on, a, uh, on a longer time scale, uh, it will change the species distribution and the forest composition of our forests. So due to that, uh, so you can see here that uh, there are some things that are already happening, like there are several types of articles or even just uh, normal uh, in the news, etc. Everyone knows that something is happening. So this is, for example, one of the most recent ones on a, a national scale for Germany. Due to the drought, the water availability for trees is reducing and some of the uh, tree population of some specific species are suffering due to that. So other types of more larger scale studies are already existing and show how, for example, some biomes, so on a more larger scale, are advancing and replacing some of the previous ones. Like in this case, there is a, this is a study that starts from 1985 to 2019, and they show how, for example, there is a greening trend in the, uh, in, in the boreal region. So that means that the, the boreal forest, the taiga, is actually slowly creeping northwards and replacing what is actually the, the tundra biome or the polar biome, while leaving some spots of browning in between and uh, letting also the temperate forest in, uh, on its own way to advance further northward. So some of those are some of the most common uh, and expected uh, type of change that we were gonna see not only in uh, biome distribution, also species distribution. So we would, sh we, we would expect that some species would move forward, so the elevation at which we could find them will increase, the latitude at which we could find them will increase, and for example, things like in, 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 in Italy, you would see in northern Italy for around Milan or the lake regions, and now you could actually plant palm trees or you could actually uh, plant vineyards in northern Germany. This is something that up to 50 or 100 years ago was very difficult to actually have. And so this, this uh, study has been developed in the context of this use case, the reforestation planner tool for Open Earth Monitor, and it's just one of the components that then will uh, come up in the final tool. Uh, this is a study that we presented in the previous workshop on the potential of the reforestation areas based on these different type of climatic scenarios and biome outcomes. The one that we're gonna present here is about these trends in the uh, different tree species in Europe. 
and it's based on data that has been produced uh, previously uh, on a European scale where we uh, produced um, uh, environmental envelopes of potential and realized distribution for multiple species in Europe and they cover, thanks to satellite data, the past 20 years and uh, these uh, ecological niches have been, um, uh, have been produced at a higher resolution so we could actually map it at a, uh, um, at a more detailed scale we we'll capture uh, details that maybe at a one kilometer scale may not be recent, uh, may, may not be seen or capture things that um, may be influenced by more local factors like for example which side of a mountain is the species located if it's on the northern, the western, the eastern or, or the west, uh, southern side. Um, so you, using this uh, we uh, have been produced previously we combined these maps to, sh to see, for example, how some disturbances could affect the uh, overall uh, distribution of the species. So these are just local fluctuations that maybe do not mean anything. So in this area specific in Italy, there was a wildfire that reduced, for example, the distribution of the beach. And we see that slowly over time, the, uh, the tree actually recovered because we included uh, reflectance information in this type of uh, distribution. So in this sense, this may not be quantified as, for example, a reduction or a niche shift for the species. But it's actually very important to be able to monitor these things over time to see if, uh, as I said, it's just a local disturbance or if it's actually a more long-term type of shift. So uh, to include information on disturbances, we included different types of maps that some of them have been also uh, mentioned yesterday in uh, Linda's presentation. Uh, they have been produced by the Technical University of Munich. So here we have a map that shows the disturbance regimes of Europe. So we know on a 30 meter pixel based if a specific type of uh, area in Europe has been disturbed by a disturbance event which is like a storm or um, storm a fire or other type of disturbances and the types are instead uh, in this second product that instead of, uh, is always produced by them and you can see the different legend. So due to the also not availability of much data related to other type of disturbances, uh, harvesting or bark beetles, other type of uh, disturbances that are not abiotic have been condensed in only one uh, class. But as far as I understood now, there is a update of the product uh, that is uh, up to this year. So it would be interesting to repeat this analysis with this uh, new information. And this is the overall workflow. So we have these maps of realized distribution. It is on a time series based. And we just, uh, the, the methodology is pretty easy. So we just fit a trend analysis over the, all the pixels. And we try to see if there is an increasing de or decreasing trend or no trend at all. So if the species is uh, actually stable according to the distribution. And then we just use the significant pixels uh, under this linear model to understand uh, what's the overall outcome. And you can see that by using these significant pixels, the patterns actually are uh, relatively reduced to reduce the, the noise that can be in the, in the linear trend. Uh, so this is actually what you can see on a European scale for the spruce in this case. And not only we calculated the different um, slopes, but also we try to flag with the previous layers I showed you before if that pixel had been disturbed or non-disturbed over the whole time series at least once. And in this case, you see that if we just uh, uh, fix the analysis on the slope, then we could consider that most of the, uh, of the distribution of this species is actually stable. Uh, but of course, this, is, uh, this can be including some of the uh, previous uh, results that I showed you before that actually it's just noise or fluctuations over time, so it's not a real niche shift, like the temporal scale at which you should observe these things is very higher and the spatial scale also matters because it can be just a salt and pepper type of uh, disturbance and if you consider uh, that as a niche shift, you may draw incorrect conclusions about the phenomenon. So what we did is that if you consider all the pixels there, a slope above zero, uh, close to zero or below zero on a 30 meter base, uh, we just downscale this uh, as a proportion over an area of one kilometer. So in this case, if you see this small pixel here, that means that uh, ra roughly five 30 meter pixels in the footprint of a one by one kilometer pixel cover actually uh, are covered by positive pixels. While in this case, 
roughly 80 or 90 percent of the pixels in one one kilometer area are instead showing a slope uh, ne close to zero, which means that the, uh, the distribution should be stable. So after doing that, uh, we produce these different maps. Uh, here are just for the sake of space, I'm just showing only three because we selected six of the 16 species from before that are the most economically important and also the ones that have the highest, let's say, accuracy and, uh, in, in the model so that we don't draw also incorrect conclusions due to the fact that the data, the starting data is flawed in some way. And you can see that most of the higher proportions of the pixel actually are shown in the stable column. So it's actually reassuring that uh, from 90 with from 80 to 90 percent of all the pixels that are covered in the distribution of these species show uh, a relatively stable distribution over the past 20 years. Uh, however, there are some hot spots, you would say, that where the proportion of actually negative, like pixels that have a negative trend over time, uh, over a large area, so a one by one kilometer, uh, are actually uh, easily uh, targetable on the, on the map. And in this case, for example, this has been uh, already uh, fact-checked with other type of uh, studies in the area, like tree ring analysis or other type of large-scale analysis or with reflectance that show that there is a uh, decrease in productivity or soil organic carbon in this area, while this area, it's uh, actually closer to the border between uh, Austria and Italy, has been affected by recent storms and um, and yeah, it's like you can see that basically there are different types of local studies that have been integrated in this, uh, in this manuscript to uh, check if all the results that we are actually seeing are noise or not. Uh, then we also conducted a disturbance analysis uh, over using the layers that I've shown you before, and we checked which ones of these pixels over the whole range have been affected by the disturbance over the past 20 years. And there is a slowly over, overall increasing trend between all the species. If you create an average over this, you would say that uh, you start at year 2000 on around 3% of the range has been affected by disturbances. And by the end of the time series, the range doubles from 6 to 8%. So the 10% of the, of the range is not, let's say, concerning if you consider the scale that we were talking about. But if you consider the distribution of these events and uh, how much damaging had been on the forest populations, it, it, becomes, uh, it becomes interesting to see where the hotspots where we could find either these disturbances on reductions uh, and contractions in the ecological niches of the species uh, can be interesting to, um, to locate because those are the ones that maybe we should be more careful and intervene to avoid uh, potential issues in the future and avoid that these hotspots would expand spatially over time. And regarding the type, as I said, it's uh, difficult to draw conclusions on uh, different types other than wind and fire because most of the disturbances are collapsed in just one class. Uh, but you can see that there is a, uh, let's say, relatively determining uh, spatial patterns between the different type of the species. So you can see that some of the coniferous species are more affected by wind disturbances over time and uh, specifically the black pine, which has a, uh, compared to the other species, has a range that is uh, relatively in the lower Mediterranean or uh, up to, let's say, Normandy in some cases in France because of plantations, uh, is more affected by fire. And if we go backwards in, uh, in these areas, there are some of those that were actually the negative trends that are shown are just because they are outside of the native range of the species. So most of the uh, negative hotspots for the spruce or the Scots pine, which is not in the figure, are actually in those areas in Central Europe where the species had been planted at a lower elevation than their native range uh, for economical reasons. So it kind of makes sense that without, uh, with, with the increase of these disturbances and the less uh, cultural care, uh, you would notice that the, those are the areas where the species are suffering the most. Uh, so, going towards the end, we can see that the, the paper has been published, as I mentioned, so you, you, it, it's available online, and all the data from the 30 meter maps to the one kilometer maps are also available on Zenodo uh, in the uh, Open Earth Monitor community, so feel free to download. There should have been a QR code, but somehow it's not showing, so maybe that's a, a little uh, mistake of the visualization. So, uh, this is 
it. So thank you for staying here, and I hope this has been informative to you.